What's up everyone? My name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of MyInvestingClub.com. If you are brand new to trading or are curious about trading at all, I want to let you guys know about a free two-hour mentorship course that I put together with my mentor, Bao. It is available at MyInvestingClub.co. The link is going to be right here. This is a free webinar with limited seating every week, so please click on the link and reserve your spot before the time runs out. Also, a special bonus for all of our viewers on YouTube. So if you guys have any questions about MIC or you're curious about joining or uh, you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you. Uh, you can now text Tosh, who is one of our head mentors and head moderators at MIC, and he'll answer any questions you have about MIC. His phone number will be in the link in the description, and it'll also be right here. Thank you guys for watching, and enjoy the video. Alrighty, so it is March 3rd, 2020, round two, Big Cap webinar. Today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of trading big caps versus small caps and then we're also going to do some watch list recaps reiterate some processes go over some setups and uh then we're going to talk about market analysis so right now it's a crazy market all right so <clears throat> like we talked about last week i'm going to go over uh some watch list recaps every day i've been posting my watch list in the in the watch list channel for everyone to follow this is to give you an idea and some insight on how to trade large caps and the type of analysis and process i do every day that sam does every day that all of us do okay so this was the watch list on february 26 2020 and get ready for a crap load of charts uh and analysis i'm about to hit you with uh with an epic fuck ton of charts so this was on february 26 commentary about the spy uh incredible sell-off it's not a penny stock though it's not going to go straight to zero there's going to be bounce days just be cautious 300 was a big support at that point and 320 at that point was a big resistance <clears throat> the stuff <clears throat> that was on watch this was when myrna was gapping coronavirus related ticker uh really has a ability to recover off a of bottom 25 was a support 29 and 30 were resistance uh, it's almost at an all-time high. I was more bullish on this. I actually think Sam actually took the short on this day at the 30 line. I don't remember if he did or didn't. Did you? That was uh, Thursday, the next yeah. day. Do what? That was the next day, uh, Thursday. Oh, the next day? The next day is when you hit it? Yeah. So, um, and then WB and then space. So as you can see, I'm just scanning for gappers. I'm just looking for things that are gapping up and gapping down. I want a catalyst, and I don't just want to trade just anything. And then I've got two continuation plays. These are the stocks that tend to trade within a range. PTON or Peladon, Paladon, Paladin. Is that what you call it? Paladin. 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 <laughs> Paladin. 28 and 30. <coughs> and then lift, 42.50 to 44. Yeah, I know, right, Tay? Yeah, I can't watch it without going pull Paladin. <laughs> <laughs> here's your new Paladin bike, honey. <laughs> so here's we're getting a divorce. Yeah, right. Get a divorce and done. So the plan was 25 as a support line, potential long off of that line. It never reached that line. 29 and 30 were the resistance. Now look at what it did. Right at the open, right at the open, what did we do? We played right along with it. Like we played perfectly right along with 29, right there, right? 29 and then we pulled back rebounded hit the 30 line and then pulled back and stayed within a range the entire day this is just the point of playing simple support and resistance you can play long and short all day long but just simple support and resistance from the daily chart wb the plan was to entering the gap down 42 is a potential short it opened uh at like 40 up here i think uh oh no it didn't it opened at 41 50, no no that's talking about this candle over here i'm sorry so it opened somewhere in this range up here so 42 line was invalidated at that point obviously you can't short the 42 line up here <laughs> so that's one of those where it's too far above my line or too close to my line and i just move on past it space Oh, space. Plan on this day was 33 and 35 lines for potential short. 33 line in the morning. You can see we played between 33 to 34 the entire morning, never moving from it, pulling back all the way to nearly 31. So this is why I keep a wide stop in the mornings. I keep a wide stop and I dance around that stuff. Uh, Sam does this a lot. He'll take a short at a line, cover a little bit, and then start to play off a high a day. So basically he'll short 
into this line right at the open, cover a little bit into the wash, and then it pops back to VWAP. And in this area at 33, he's got to stop right here at the high of the day, right? Mm -hmm. And then once it pushes over 33, you know, you stop out and you reassess. And then it slams back under the 33 line. You've got to reshort, right? Because it's back under your line. Your line is holding as resistance again. That's a confirmation. When it comes back under the line like that, that's confirmation. 35, yep. highest we got was 34.69. You could argue love, that you uh, can scale that range, but I mean, that's a little far for me. I mean, I don't know about Sam. You play these in a certain particular way during midday. You've got to consider that this is right around when you wake up. So what would you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's so it's up when I wake up, and then I just short, you know. So yeah, how do you choose price targets? Yeah, it's just going to be it um, for longs. Um, you know, it's going to be pre-market highs or daily resistance points. Um, yep. For shorts, it's going to be pre-market lows, green, red. Oh, that's also for a long too. You know, red previous closing price, pre-market highs. Wow, uh, uh, red to green. Uh, uh, we never red mentioned red. Green red to green is a great point. indicator yep. for large caps. If something. Lap, I always take Something, a piece of uh, VWAP. Like if I'm day trading, that I'm always taking a piece of VWAP. If I'm swing trading, it has only to do with the support and the resistance of the chart. When a stock crosses the red green line, do you wait for a five minute bar to close for confirmation or just get in? I, I like I to don't just really get buy in. red green moves. Uh, I do rarely, when, like, like the rare times I go long, but I like to just flip. So breaks through with authority red to green goes yeah. green volume i like to buy that first pullback yeah volume's the key i like to buy that first pullback into the line and set the risk for red and yeah i mean i could get faked out you know could wash red but i i you know, I, I don't go long often but uh, that that is a setup that i will if it's like you know something over high of day all right guys take so it easy. uh take it easy and uh stay safe in this crazy market guys and don't buy the dip this time <laughs> Word. All right. See you guys. See you, Joey. Later, bro. Later, folks. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.